Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater. Starring Jack Carson, Dorothy L'Amour, and Robert Alda in April Showers. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. More than a few years ago, a young man wrote a tune called April Showers which became one of America's all-time favorites. His name was Lou Silvers. And for a long time now, Lou has been the musical director of the Lux Radio Theater. So we're especially pleased tonight that April Showers is the title and the theme of the romantic musical play which we present here. Warner Brothers made the picture. And starring this evening are Jack Carson in his original screen role, Dorothy L'Amour as his partner on stage and off, and Robert Alder, also from the film cast. Look around these days and you can see that April showers have put the smile of springtime on the countryside. But you don't have to look very far to see that in any month, luck showers put a smile of contentment on anyone who tries the new bath size Lux toilet soap. And here's a full order of smiles and songs now as the curtain rises on April showers, starring Jack Carson as Joe Time. Dorothy L'Amour as his wife, June, and Robert Alder as Billy Shea, with Bobby Ellis as Buster. We were sailing along. Where were we sailing along? On Moonlight Bay. Yes, San Francisco in the so-called good old days. For one thing, they were the days of vaudeville. Remember vaudeville? Well, most of the acts were pretty good. Some were even wonderful. But some were very, very tired. Like Joe Time and June, songs, dances, and witty sayings. Sweet song on Moonlight Bay. June, there's one thing about the life of an elevator boy. What's that, Joe? <laughs> it sure has its ups and downs. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Joe, who's that girl I saw you with last night? Well, I met her in a revolving door, honey. We've been going around together ever since. <laughs> <laughs> As we sang love's old sweet song on moonlight day. Hey, come on, June. Let's give him an encore. Joe, please. Haven't they suffered enough? Come on into the dressing room while our health is still good. Well, gee, honey, you can't get laughs from empty seats. That's the trouble with a matinee. They never have enough... Oh, Joe, who are we fooling? They just don't like us. Well, that makes us even. I don't like them either. Just wait till the night, baby. We'll roll them in the aisle. I've been thinking, Joe. Do you suppose if we cut out the jokes or if we got a few new jokes, maybe they'd... Uh... Oh, how are you, Mr. Gordon? Mind if I come in? It's your theater, Mr. Gordon. Come on in. Well, Joe, I uh, just caught the act. Huh? Well, you did, huh? Joe, if there's one thing I hate to do is to hurt people's feelings. You think I'm boss around here? Oh, no. They're the boss, that audience out there. They tell me what to do. And after the way you're... Ah, now, hold on, Gordon. We don't like to hurt people's feelings either. Well, I know that, Joe. So you might as well prepare yourself for a shock. We're turning in our notice as of right now. Ain't that right, June? Oh, now, wait a minute, Joe. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Gordon. Putting a comedy act like ours in the, in the number two spot? No wonder the audience didn't applaud. They didn't have time to take off their gloves. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, Joe, here's your money for the matinee. Ah, sorry, June. It's all right, Mr. Gordon. Closed. First time we were ever closed. We weren't fired. We quit. Maybe you quit, darling. But I was fired. Oh, gee, June. How do you think we'll ever make Broadway if you talk like that? Look, Joe, we've just been canceled out of a three-day booking in a second-rate theater. We haven't paid the hotel bill. We've got exactly $12 left. Not a booking in sight, and, and you're talking about Broadway. Well, why shouldn't I? Why, when word gets around to the booking officers that we're available, why, they'll... They'll... They'll, they'll what? Oh, Joe, what am I going to do with you? Oh, don't worry, baby. 
We'll get by. Yeah, I just hope we can get by that hotel desk. Poor Curly, we owe him $62 room rent. Yeah, well, let's get our things together. We ought to be getting, getting a letter today, honey, from Buster. Oh, Joe, what if we hadn't paid his tuition for the whole term? Just think what would happen now. Buster wouldn't be able to stay in school. That kid of ours doesn't need school. Joe. Buster's going to be a great little trooper one of these days. Joe, please, not again. I don't want my son to be in vaudeville, and definitely not at the age of 12. Oh, now, June. It's a grand institution. I tell you, it's been a great satisfaction to me being a performer, holding audiences in the palm of my hand, making people laugh and making them cry. We make managers cry, Joe, not people. Besides, Buster doesn't like that school. Remember his last letter? The principal didn't even know what an act in one was for a time step. And a guy like that running a school. Where would I be now if I'd stayed in school? About the fourth grade, honey. Now hand me that suitcase. Buster! Buster time! Well, is this some surprise? Hello, Mr. Curley. How's the hotel business? Ooh, don't ask. School is out so early this year, Buster? No, I just walked out on him, Mr. Curley. They wanted to hold me over for another year in the same spot. But I said, gentlemen, as the oak tree said, when spring comes, I'm leaving. <laughs> get it? I get it. Even with my eyes shut, you look just like your papa. <laughs> Say, Mr. Curley, are they up in their room, big time and mom? Your mama and papa, they got a matinee today, Buster. But I just came from the theater. The manager said they quit and walked out. Quit? I suppose that means they were fired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big time fired? That's a laugh. A $62 laugh. I'm hysterical. Hey, who's the kid? Now, don't tell me, Curly. Buster time. That's right, sir. Well, what do you know? I used to carry you when you were a baby. And I've been carrying his papa ever since. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Uh... Swift, Buster. Harry Swift. He is the agent for actors, Buster. Very important man. An agent, huh? Hey, could you get me a tryout, Mr. Swift? Oh, what do you call your act, son? Buster time. Neat songs and nifty dances. Own tuxedo and we'll travel. Well, yeah, let's get over there to the piano. All right, hold it, boys. Hold it. Hold it, fellas. Hey, boys, I want you to meet a client of mine. This is Joe Times, kid. Hi, oh, oh, brother. And Buster you. says he's got an act. <laughs> Chip off the old block, eh? Well, what would you like, sport? Nothing wrong with that tune you were just singing. It's just the way you did it. Give us another chorus on the piano, Al. Let's listen to the genius. Dear old girl, the robin sings above you. Dear old girl, it speaks of how I love you. The blinding tears are falling as I think of my lost pearl, and my broken heart is calling, calling for you, dear old Just sneak over at the elevator. We can... Hey, June. June, look. No. No, it can't be. Buster. Mom, 
Mom and Big Time. Well, how you doing, Small Time? Oh, fine, Pop. All right, Buster. Why aren't you in school? I, uh, I, uh, I stopped by your theater, Mom. How come you quit? Quit? Uh, well, I, I'm glad you asked that, Small Time. You know that manager? Well, it seems that he was... Uh, 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 uh. Huh? Hello, Joe. Oh. Hello, Curly. You quit, huh? So, no job again. Joe, look. I love people from the stage. I love performers. So I have this hotel especially catering to actors. One week you won't pay me, that's all right. Two weeks I don't mind. But five weeks, Joe, and now no job. Don't worry, Curly. We're bound to land something soon. But, but you haven't changed your act in five years. Hey, now, hold on to your horses. You're just running a hotel. We can leave here anytime we want to. Stop hamming it up, dear. Well, what is he, a critic? We'll pay our bill. I don't believe you. All right, then we won't pay our bill. Now I believe you. Well, that's right, Joe. Your act needs something fresh, a new spark or something, and you've got your new spark right here, Buster. Buster? Buster in the act? Say. Nothing doing. Buster's going back to school. Oh, Mom, now, let geez. your agent do the talking, son. Joan, Joe, you've got eyes and ears. Do I have to sell him to you? Why, with Buster in your act, I guarantee I can get your book for the whole summer. Absolutely no. But, Mom, it's practically vacation time. Lots of kids take jobs during the summer. Not on the stage, they don't. I could teach you the routines in no time, honey. Teach me the routines? What do you think I've been doing all these months in school? Oh, I give up. You remember Mr. Lovejoy and Mr. Gay Pop? Yeah, sure. Well, it'll make a swell double for you and me. I'll show you what I mean, Mom. Hey, Professor, could you give us Mr. Lovejoy? I sure can, kid. Come on, big time. Let's show Mom. Let's show him. Lovely weather, Mr. Lovejoy. Oh, quite balmy, Mr. Gay. I see by the financial page you made history yesterday. Oh, yes, I made a killing. Cornered cotton, oats, and wool. I've always been a bear in the market, but yesterday I turned bull. Oh, no, Mr. Lovejoy. Don't you believe what I say? Barely, Mr. Lovejoy. Oh, that's bully, Mr. Gay. But tell me, Mr. Lovejoy. What the question, Mr. Gay? You know the market inside out. What should I buy today? Well, pick up some tobacco. If you don't do that, you're nuts. Then whether the market goes up or down, you won't run out of butts. Thanks, Mr. Lovejoy. Take my tip today. Oh, I'll take it, Mr. Lovejoy. You've got it, Mr. Gay. Solvent, Mr. Lovejoy. I'm loaded, Mr. Gay. The Wall Street Journal says you gave your great big yacht away. Yes, well, the anchor chain got rusty and some dust got on the sail. So I gave the thing to a chap I know. I travel now by rail. Oh, so, Mr. Lovejoy? Yes, I like it more this way. Harlecar, I presume. Uh, boxcar, shall we say. Au revoir, Mr. Lovejoy. Toodaloo, Mr. Gay. Don't forget to look me up if perchance you pass my way. Oh, I'm not going any place, old chap. Either next week or today. Shall we dance, Mr. Lovejoy? Oh, to sickery, Mr. Gay. You see, Mom, you get the idea? Oh, I knew this would happen someday. Oh, well. There's a certain theater manager who could use an act like this. Let's go and see him now. Yeah. We'll go over to the Majestic, Harry. We'll show that guy, Gordon. He's just the one we're going to show. But Gordon just fired us. He's going to get a chance to hire you back. Okay. Come on, small time. Let's give him another chance. Second, 
Joe. What's on your mind, Gordon? Hello, Mr. Gordon. How do we do, Mr. Gordon? Well, I sure didn't make any mistake taking you back. The act's really great now, Joe. The audience loves you. Naturally. Naturally. And I've decided to hold you over for another week. Not a chance. Come on, baby. Uh, what did you say? You're not turning down work already, dear. We'll take it. I just wanted to make them squirm a little. Oh, gee whiz, Mom. School was never like this. Neither was the act, darling. Joe, wait. Joe, I said I was holding you over. Sorry, Gordon. We got a booking in Oakland. Oakland? Well, we weren't sure about staying over here, You're so You're we... actually signed? Uh, no, not actually signed, but since they're paying us more money... Are they paying you double? Double? Is that an offer? Two weeks, Joe. I doubled the salary. Well, <laughs> then I feel free to tell you, sir, that there really wasn't any booking in Oakland. Thanks for doubling our salary, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, Joe. After the way your act's been going over, I was really prepared to triple it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boy, you sure fooled him, didn't we, Pop? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, incidentally, Joan, your old boss is going to be on the bill in a couple of weeks. Billy Shea. Billy Shea and his American beauties. What do you know about that, honey? Him on the same bill with us. Isn't it the other way around, darling? Well, maybe they'll have to print Billy's name in bigger letters, but... The audience will decide who the real headliners are. You said a mouthful big time. Billy Shay, after all these years. Everybody loves a baby, that's why I'm in love with you. Pretty baby, pretty baby. And I'd like to be your sister, brother, dad, and mother too. Pretty baby, pretty baby. Won't you come and let me rock you in my cradle of love And we'll cuddle all the time Oh, I want a loving baby And it might as well be you Pretty baby of mine Pretty baby of mine Hey, look at them rehearsing out there, honey. Billy's act's still got a lot of class. Yeah, but there's not a laugh in it big time. Now, that's all, ladies. Now, beat it. Shoot. Just be back here by 8 o'clock. Hiya, Billy. Joe. Joe time. And June. June, darling, just as beautiful as ever. How's my favorite girl? <laughs> still dodging, Billy. Hiya, Buster. Hello, Mr. Shea. Say, did you catch my rehearsal just now? Part of it. And if you'd like my oh, opinion... Oh, we thought it was wonderful, Billy. Simply wonderful. Yeah, lots of class, Billy. A really classy act. Well, that's why June used to work for me, huh, honey? And I sure wish I had you in the act right now. You don't know how tough it is working with six feather brain chorus girls. They didn't look so tough from here. Hmm. Well, I gotta run. I'll catch your act tonight, huh? Maybe give you a few ideas. Yeah. How do you like that guy? Give us a few ideas. He sounds like a big ham. And you sound like a little one, darling. I got your music, Mrs. Time. Anytime you want to start rehearsing. Okay, Charlie. April showers. Bring the flowers that bloom in May. So if it's raining, have no regrets, because it isn't raining. Gotten something? Time for Buster's lesson. What'll it be, Mom? Tap, soft shoe, or ballet? Geography. Take him over to the hotel, Joe, and make him study. Yeah, 
ask me, Pop, it's just a waste of time. We could still be over at the theater rehearsing. Yeah, but your mom said I had to give you a lesson. Well, I'll probably get so much education, I'll wind up a straight man and get no laughs. <laughs> well, we got to keep your mom happy now. Come on, let's see. What, um, what's the capital of Iowa? Well, I don't know. You never played there. No, well, anyway, it's got a capital. It says so right here in the book. Des Moines. That's French. Oh. Uh -huh. How do you spell Mississippi? Capital M-I-S-S, -S, period. Come on, come on. Well, that's the way variety spells it. And if it's good enough for variety, it's good enough for me. Hey, speaking of variety, it says piano acts are going very strong back east. Piano acts, huh? Say, why don't we put some piano in our act? I'll bet we could work up something real nifty. Yeah, maybe, maybe we could at that. And now the Curly's put a piano in our room. Still home 62 bucks, Pop. Ah, that Curly's a great guy, kid. Rich or broke, I wouldn't think of living anywhere else but in this hotel. Pop, you know that song you wrote about Mom once? Yeah? I'd sure like to hear it again. Mm. Anything's better than geography, huh? You said it, Big Time. <laughs> Sing it, Big Time. Sing it. Just the neighborhood passed when I met her. Just a freckle-faced kid with a curl. But you ought to see she turned out to be the world's most beautiful girl. She would hang round the gang on the corner, but we never would give her a whirl. Oh, gee, were we dumb, cause now she's become the world's most beautiful girl. Oh, we chased her, we teased her, laughed at her tears. We made fun of her calico gown. But lo and behold, in a couple of years, she was the toast of the town. Though the freckle-faced kid that we laughed at could have married a baron or earl. Believe it or not, it's me that has got the world's most beautiful girl. Say, your your mom is really beautiful, isn't she, small time? She sure is, Pop. Uh, of course, with you, looks don't matter so much, do they? Hmm? No. No. Hey, June! June, where are you? Buster! June! Hey, Billy, you see my family? Hey, what's the matter with you? They're right where they're supposed to be, in the dressing room. Dressing Oh, sure, the dressing room. Hey, June! June, Buster! Joe! Joe, what is it, darling? Take it easy, big time. There's a performance going this, on. This, this telegram just came. I fell at the stage door. Hey, sit down, Pop. I'll read it. Probably another touch, huh? Oh, it couldn't be that. Your pop's too excited. Well? Mr. Joe Time, Princess Theater, San Francisco. Can arrange? Can arrange? Oh, well, what's the matter with you? What are you so excited about? Give me that telegram. I can arrange... Yahoo! Hey, what in the world's going on here? That's what I'd like to know, Billy. Joe just got this telegram and it says... Oh, no. No, I don't believe it. It's just too good... Billy, here, you read it. Let me see it. Can arrange 12 weeks in New York for you on Keith's circuit. Opening date, September 18th. Are you available? William Barnes. New York? Well... Give me a pencil, somebody. Give me a pencil and a paper. i got to answer this right away. Joe, no, that's my best eyebrow pencil. Yeah, I'll get you a gold one. <laughs> Be sure and give Barnes my regards. Yeah. June, June, you, you, you write it, honey. I, I'm too nervous. Here. Uh, but, but, but what will I say? Well, just, just tell them. Tell them that we accept. Uh, provided we get top billing, have separate dressing rooms, uh, transportation back and forth from here to New York, and... Uh, 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 I guarantee that we play Broadway before November 1st. There, that ought to do it. Got all that? Yep, every word. Let me see it. Let's see. William Barnes, St. James, Billy, New York City. Okay, Joe Time. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most beautiful telegram I ever wrote. Send it. Before the second act of April Showers, here's Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter. What's new, Libby? 
Well, there's lots of talk over at Paramount about their latest picture, Streets of Laredo. Oh, yes. The story of the Old West, starring William Holden, McDonald Carey, Mona Freeman, and Bill Bendix. And tonight they're holding a special premiere of the picture in the real town of Laredo, Texas, as part of the city's anniversary fiesta. Well, the people of Laredo will be in for some real excitement when they see Mona and a host of Hollywood stars in person. Mona is thrilled over Streets of Laredo. She has her first grown-up role after playing so many teenagers. You know, I think she's strikingly pretty in Technicolor, don't you, Libby? Not a bit prettier than in real life. I'm sure John Kennedy would say her fresh, lovely complexion is one of her greatest charms. I certainly would, Libby. And as you know, it's one of those famous Lux complexions. I should say so. In fact, Mona tells me she'll be a Lux fan for life. She's so delighted with the gentle care Lux toilet soap gives her skin. And I'm sure she likes that big new bath side. Naturally. There's lots more of the creamy lather Mona says is so fragrant, so luxurious. Well, the generous new bath cake makes the most delightful beauty bath fastidious women could ask for. Screen stars love it. It leaves such a lovely fragrance on the skin. A fragrance like the bouquet of many different flowers. No wonder nine out of ten Hollywood stars use this big satin smooth cake for tip-to-toe loveliness. Be sure to get the big new bath size Lux Toilet Soap. It's another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. Here's Mr. William Keeley, our producer. Act two of April Showers, starring Dorothy L'Amour as June, Jack Carson as Joe, and Robert Alda as Billy Shea, with Bobby Ellis as Buster. Well, it's just about the biggest moment in the lives of the three times. An offer to come to New York. Joe, June, and Buster are now in the office of Mr. Barnes, the booking agent. But the broad smile of welcome on Mr. Barnes' face undergoes a drastic change as he takes a second look at Buster. That's... That's Buster. That's your son? Well, yes. What's the matter, Mr. Barnes? What have I got? Yellow fever or something? Believe me, it's worse. Much worse. What's worse? What are you talking about? Well, they told me he was a youngster, but I... Well, I had no idea. He was such a baby. But that's what makes the act so great. The fact that Buster is just a kid. There's a law here that no child under 16 can sing or dance on the stage. Are you 16? Well, I'll be 16. Oh, this is terrible. Mr. Barnes, we spent every nickel we had to come here. Yeah, you, you can't keep us from working now. You've never heard of that society that watches every act to see that the age law is enforced? I'm awfully sorry. I really am. You're sorry? What about us taking everything we had this chance? You just can't... Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Barnes, but Colonel Nemo's here. He's in a great hurry. Oh, show him right in. Well, well, well. How are you, Barnesy, old kid, old kid? Here, have a cigar. Hey, a midget. And who are you? Now, sit down, Colonel. How is Baltimore? You didn't hear? Say, I fractured him. They're still applauding. Hey, June, Buster, Mr. Barnes, look! Put me down, you big ape. Don't you get it? He's not even as big as Buster. We passed Buster off as a midget. Big time, yeah. It's a great idea. My son, a midget? I won't have it, Joey. It's ridiculous. And what's so ridiculous about a midget, madam? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Colonel. I only meant that... I happen to have a son myself. He's five feet eleven. How do you think I feel? (laughs) What what, what do you say, Mr. Barnes? They'd never believe it. Oh, sure they would, Mr. Barnes. You've never seen Buster work. He can imitate anything. Go on, kids. Show him. Well, well, well. How are you, Barnes, you old kid, old kid? Here. Have a cigar. Say, did I fracture him in Baltimore? They're still applauding. Well, I must say. Say, kid, you're okay. Okay, he's great. Can't miss. By golly, I'll take a gamble. Mr. Time, you open at practice with 5 and 0 on Monday. And as for you, small time... Yes, sir? You've got to give the performance of your life. Remember, on stage or yourself, but off stage or a midget. Leave it to me, Bonzi, old kid. Well, I'll see you all there on Monday. And if that society comes calling, just remember, the kid fooled me, too. I never shall forget that lovely afternoon. We met her at the fountain in 
in the bar. June, Buster, come on, let's take another bow. Joe, Joe, wait. Come on, Mr. Barnes. Be with you in a minute, Mr. Barnes. Joe, don't go out there. No more bows. What's the matter? Why not? No, the act's fine. It's great. But the society spotted Buster. They'll be coming backstage any minute with a cop. Okay, Buster, into my dressing room. Quick. Just remember what to do, Doc. No, the act's fine. It's great. But the society spotted Buster. They'll be coming backstage any minute with a cop. Okay, Buster, into my dressing room. Quick. Just remember what to do, darling. Don't worry, Mom. Just stall him for a couple of minutes and leave him to me. Come in. Come right in, folks. Come right in. Excuse the colonel's appearance. He was just about to shave. Oh, they won't mind the lather, June. Folks, this is Colonel Rudolph Val Vanderwooten. Glad to know you, ladies. Hey, officer, what's up? The joint fish or something? Well, Colonel, it seems these ladies are from the society. Not another benefit. Oh, Joe, you know how tired I am. Well, it seems there's a law, Colonel. Children can't sing or dance on the stage. <laughs> now, don't get upset, Colonel, but they, they thought you were a child. <laughs> that shows how good you are, Colonel. You ought to take a bow. Oh, don't feel bad, ladies. It's a natural mistake, and I don't hold it against you. Here you are, Sergeant. Have one of my sea guys. Well, thank you, Colonel. Here, you have one of mine. Uh, yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> Nothing like a good clear of van, I always say. You do? I mean, yes, you do. Here's a match, Colonel. Oh. Well, ladies, are you satisfied now? Yes, yes, I believe we are. Come, Clara. Sorry to have bothered you folks. Oh, don't hesitate to call any time. Oh, Buster, you're as pale as a ghost. I knew this cigar would get him. Only I'm afraid it got me, too. Oh, what a piece of acting. Kids, you were great. Pop, I'm dying. Don't worry about a thing. And that shaving routine. Or did we fool him? Did we... F it seems I forgot my glove. And yeah, that's not all. I forgot to give you this summons, Mr. Time. Sorry about the cigar, Colonel. Welfare Society breaks up acted proctors. Time family through in New York. Joe, June, and Buster now back in Frisco. Fill it up again, will you, Bert? Are you sure you want another, Mr. Time? You've got to met me in half an hour. Look, if it's too much trouble to sell me a drink. Hey, you're the boss, Mr. Time. Well, how are you, Joe? I thought you were in New York. Is that Hick Town? We walked out on him, aren't you? Walked out, eh? Yeah, Buster couldn't go on because of some nutty law they got out there. Is that so? Of course, they wanted June and me to go on alone, but I said nothing to him. Either the three of us go on or we don't go on at all. Well, you know what I'd do then if I were you? What? I'd sue Variety. Variety? What are you talking about? Just listen to this, big shot. Western Act flops in Gotham as Welfare Society Yanks kid. The removal of Buster Time from the Three Times Act removed all the snap and ginger. Joe and June Time without Junior failed to click and were closed. Okay. Sure, we flopped. June and me flop by ourselves. Anything else you want to read to me? Oh, don't get sore, pal. Maybe you need a drink. You bet I need a drink. Hey, Bert. Yeah. Give me that bottle. You heard me, the bottle. Pop, please, get in the dressing room. Oh, gosh, Pop, if the manager sees you... Joe. Hi, honey. How's the world's most beautiful now? Joe, we're on next. Can you make it? Read all about it, baby. Read all about it in variety. Oh, Joe, why? Why did you do this? <laughs> I couldn't help myself, honey. It's the funniest thing I ever saw. The whole town knows that we laid an egg in New York. The whole world knows about it. Read it. Read all about it. Pop, please. I'll get your makeup on. We just didn't lay an egg, Buster. We laid a cake. A whole cake with 20,000 eggs in it. That's all we did. Well, so you finally got here. Hey, what's the idea of busting in my dressing room? Who are you? Joe, that's Mr. Barkley. Huh? The manager, Joe. Oh, the manager. How are you? Glad to see you. Drunk, huh? It's a hick town. New York is a hick town. I'm sorry, Mrs. Time. He's in no shape to give a performance. Please, give us 15 minutes. We could switch places with a juggling act. He can't even stand up. I won't insult my customers. Joe's not a drinker. He never missed a show in his life. He's missed this one. Well, how about tomorrow? Not tomorrow or any other day in this theater. I'm sorry for you, Mrs. Time and the boy. Mom. Mom, maybe if I got some black coffee. Oh, just let him alone, Buster. 
Maybe it's better if he doesn't sober up any sooner than he has to. Ah, uh, that's the story, Billy. We get tossed out of New York, and I pull a prize down of all. Get soused right before our performance. Mr. Shea? Shake hands with the number one flop in show business. Yeah, I heard about the tough breaks you got. Uh, everybody's through. heard about it. Uh, how'd you do in Seattle? Oh, oh, terrible. I've been laying off a month myself. You? What happened to the American Beauty? Oh, don't remind me. I'm no good doing a single. But I've been looking for the right partners. Well, how's June in small town? Oh, the great, great. I gotta tell him you're in... Hey. Yeah, we're we a couple of dopes. Dopes? You're looking for partners? What's the matter with them? June and small time. You kidding? Look, I'm blacklisted. Nobody's going to book them as long as I go with the act, but you. Oh, if I were only sure you're on the level. I'll prove it to you. We'll find that agent, Harry Swift, and then break the news to June and Buster. Not only that, June, but we open next Monday in Oakland, and here, a week's advance from Harry Swift. Billy, I, I just don't understand. What happened, Joe? Well, I get hold of Harry, see? And I say, Harry, isn't the three times one of the nicest little acts you've ever seen? He says, of course it is, Joe. So I say, well, why do we ever get any more bookings? He says, because of you, Joe. The theaters won't take a chance on you. I say, well, suppose I step out of the act. Pop, no. Yeah, I'm not finished, Paul. I say, suppose somebody else takes my place. He says, well, who did you have in mind, Joe? So I say, Billy Shea. He says, now you got something. And I say, you can say that again. Billy's a great performer. He can sing, he can hoof, and he's got class. And look at him, June. He's even the right size. Almost. With a little taken in here and there, he could even wear my wardrobe. Now, isn't that a great idea, or isn't it? Joe, I won't Billy my name, and you're all set. It's a wonderful idea. It's a terrible idea. Mom and I can't go on without you. Buster's right, Joe. I'm sorry, Billy. Well, I was under the impression I was helping you folks out. I don't blame you for being insulted, Billy. Here he is giving up a great girl act just to do us a favor, and you two are complaining. And what would you do, Joe? Well, I'll... I'll stick around. Harry says if I behave myself in six months, the bookers will give me a clean bill of health. I'm not going to let you do it. You know, this is pretty funny. Well, I'll see you around. Ah, no, you don't. You made a deal, Bill, and you're going to stick to it. But you don't want it like this, Joe. You know you don't. Oh, don't I? I try to be nice about this, but... I'm okay if you want the truth. I'm sick of worrying about you two. I'm sick of playing the heavy. I'm sick of coming back to this room every night and telling you they don't want you and Buster on account of me. Now, you can do what you want about the booking. I'm walking out right now. New three times act, sensation in Oakland. Song and dance combo hit top for entertainment. Billy Shea revised routine. Three times new box office smash. Nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina in the morning. No one could be sweeter than my sweetie when I meet her in the morning. Where the morning glories wind around the door, whispering pretty stories I long to hear once more. My girly, where the dew is pearly, early in the morning. Butterflies all flutter up and kiss each little buttercup at dawning. If I had Aladdin's lamp for only a day, I'd make a wish and here's what I'd say. Nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina in the morning. June, June, can I come in? Billy, sure, come on in. I was afraid you'd left for the hotel. June, I've got some great news. Guess who just left me? He was here tonight and caught the act. Al Wilson. Al Wilson? Yeah, and listen to this. He's producing a new musical comedy and he wants us, June. Oh, I always told you we'd make it, didn't I? Musical comedy. Oh, it's too good to be true. No living out of a trunk, no hopping from town to town. Uh, and this is only the beginning. There's no telling how far we can go. Together. Yes, and then if we're hit, maybe Buster Joe and I could... June. June, will you forget about Joe? I can't forget him, Billy. You've taken his place in the act, but 
Don't you forget I'm still married to him. Well, you shouldn't be. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Are you trying to say that I should divorce Joe? Well, that's the only thing you can do in fairness to yourself. But would it be fair to him? Oh, June, it's time you stopped worrying about everybody else and thought about yourself for a change. You know you haven't a chance of happiness with Joe anymore. Maybe you would with me. June, I've always been crazy about you. Will you think it over? Yes, I... I'll think it over, Billy. Sure, I'll think it over. <laughs> Is it? Come on in. Hello, big time. Small time. Gee, come on in. Gosh, am I glad to see you. I'm glad to see you too, Pop. What are you doing at Frisco? Oh, I'm laying off. Laying off? A big shot like you? Oh, Pop. What's the matter? Oh, I mean this room, huh? Yeah, it's kind of messy. Huh? The, the maid didn't show up today. Who are you kidding, Pop? Oh, gosh, why would you take the money? Mom and me are doing great. The money belongs to you. Now, nah, now, nah, look, your mom and me went over that weeks ago. Besides, who needs any money? Do I look like I need money? Gee, Pop, you sure do. Uh, how'd you know I was here? I had an awful time finding you. Curly said you moved out of the hotel two months ago. Gee, big time, I... I thought I really lost you. Oh, now, cheer up. Cheer up, kid got to come back big time. It isn't right for us to be split up like this. I'm scared. Scared? Scared of what? Things like... Well, like Billy. What about Billy? He wants Mom to divorce you and marry him. Well, Billy's always kidding your mom like that. Don't mean a thing. You, you've heard him do it right in front of me. They, they're leaving Oakland tomorrow. They're going to Portland. Portland? I thought you said you were laying off. I didn't see the act was laying off. Just me. Hey, you know more about show business than to pull a stunt like that. Look what happened to me just because I missed one matinee. Gee, big time. Don't you think it would be better for both of us? I mean, if, if I stayed here with you, we could team up and do a swell double. No, no, no. I got, I got plans on my own now. You'd only be in the way. I wouldn't bother you. I promise. I, I'm breaking in a new partner, see? And ki kids make her nervous. What's more, you're making me nervous, too. Maybe you don't feel so I good. I feel great. Now, get out of here. You get back to Oakland, and tomorrow you go with your mom to Portland. But we're coming back here in a couple of weeks, right back here to Frisco. So what? There's a new musical comedy opening. They booked the act, Pop. Musical comedy? Well, that's that's fine. That's great. So why can't I stay with you? At least till I come back from Portland. Now, quit your blubbering, will you? Everything going great, and look what you do. Walking out in your mom and your partner. And I don't like that tattletale in either when there's nothing to it. Hey, get smart and clear out of here. All right, big time. Okay. Don't come back either. I, I won't be here. I'm moving. I, I got a swell suite in the hotel. When? When do you open, Pop? When? I don't know. Soon. I, in a week, maybe. Good luck, Pop. So long. That's better. So long, kid. Pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of April Shower. Our guest tonight is Miss Joan Winfield, who has appeared in many Warner Brother pictures. They tell me you have a special reason for being attached to your first name, Joan. Oh, that's true, Mr. Keeley. It happens to be the first name of my very favorite actress, Joan Crawford. Well, I can understand why you feel that way. She's a great star. I think so more than ever, now that I've seen her latest picture, Flamingo Road. A tense melodrama, carnival dancer rises to social success, arouses the enmity of a crooked political boss. You uh... mean Sidney Greenstreet. My, oh, my, what a prize villain he makes in Flamingo Road. In a word, he's sinister. As for Joan Crawford, the word for her is glamorous. Right, Joan? Absolutely. What do you think, Mr. Kennedy? The head of our studio makeup department said he wished he had a dollar for every time he's been asked how Miss Crawford keeps her complexion so lovely. Well, that's easy to answer. 
Joan Crawford is one of our most famous Lux girls. Yes, I visited her dressing room and know that she depends on Lux toilet soap for beauty care. She keeps a new bath size cake on hand, too. It makes such a grand, refreshing beauty bath. Yes, Joan. That big, generous cake has really scored a hit in Hollywood. There's something so luxurious about having your favorite complexion soap in bath size. I'd hate to be without it. Well, don't you worry, Joan. That big new bath cake is available everywhere now. Thank you, Miss Joan Winfield, for coming tonight. Now, here's a suggestion for the ladies in our audience. Let the whole family enjoy the new bath size Lux Toilet Soap. Women love its flower-like perfume. And men go for that rich, abundant lather. Try the big new bath size Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow. Now, our producer, Mr. William Keeley. The curtain rises on the third act of April Showers, starring Jack Carson as Joe Time, Dorothy Lamour as June, and Robert Alder as Billy Shea, with Bobby Ellis as Buster. <laughs> It's a couple of weeks later, and the three times are back again in San Francisco to start rehearsals for Al Wilson's big new musical comedy. In Curly's hotel, a guest is trying to register. Well, well, can you accommodate me here, or must I go to the St. Francis? Please, lady, if you can't wait for just a minute... Yeah, yeah, yeah! June! Junie, you are back! <laughs> Hello, Curly. Can I accommodate you, she said. For the quest, well, where's the rest of that? Oh, Buster and Billy went straight to the theater. Curly, have... Have you seen Joe lately? Not for months, June. He used to drop in for his mail, but now, no more. He's in town. Do you know where he is? I don't like to say the starling. Yeah, he's in town, something called Mike's Place on the Barbary Coast. Mike's Place. Thanks, Curly. I'll be back later. This is Mike's Place, all right, lady, only I think you made a mistake. I'm looking for a performer named Joe Time. Performer, lady? Oh, that's him over there, cleaning up the tables. Thank you. Joe. Huh? June. I... I hope you don't mind my coming here. Mind? I should say not. I... It's lucky you came today, though. I've I just been helping Mike out here. i got a swell job lined up starting tomorrow. But that's fine, Joe. Well, sit down, June. Sit down. Gosh, honey, you look great. How's, how's the kid? How's Buster? He's fine, Joe. Yeah. I, uh... I read somewhere you're going to be in Wilson's new musical. Opening New Year's Eve, huh? That's right. Well, I'll, I'll be there with bells on, right down in front with the bald heads. Buster and I want you backstage, Joe. With us. Well, what about Billy? How come Wilson wants me? Oh, I, I didn't mean in the act I... Oh. Billy will still work with Buster and me, but that doesn't mean we couldn't have a home again. We wouldn't be at the theater all the time. Same old story, June. I sit around picking daisies while you and Buster bring home the bacon. Joe, I didn't mean that. You know I... am pretty I... cheap, honey, but not that cheap. Not yet. Hey, tell him, Joe, the help don't sit around in this joint. Yeah, yeah, okay. You're looking at it all wrong, Joe. Maybe I got a one-track mind, but there's no other way to look at it. Well, why don't you get smart, June? Get yourself a divorce. A divorce? Why not? You and me are... Well, it just hasn't worked out. Get, get a lawyer. I'll sign anything you want. Joe... And it won't be hard for him to find me, either. I'll still be right here in Mike's place. Uh, say hello to the kid for me. We're all ready to rehearse the merry number, Mr. Wilson. Okay. You girls in the background, keep it alive. All right, Billy, Buster. Okay, let's go. Merry or a little bit old-fashioned. Any little maid could be Mary or a little bit old fashioned. But Mary, you look awfully good to me. Hold it. Hold it, 
please. Hold it. Hold it. Oh, now, look, why did you stop us, Mr. Wilson? Something wrong? Yeah, something is wrong, Billy. Oh, I'm not criticizing you and Buster. It's just this number. Well, what's wrong with it? Well, there's no contrast. It's too slow. Uh, it's out, Billy. Out of the show, the whole routine. Oh, now, wait a minute. You're forgetting something, Wilson. We have a contract. Play or pay, remember? Oh, I didn't say I'm throwing you out the act. It's just the number. I think I know what you mean, Mr. Wilson. Oh, hello, June. You want a number with more punch in it. Yeah, like my pop's old baggy pants routine. Quiet, Buster. That old hokum went out ten years ago. Uh, I'm not so sure. Maybe you hit it right on the head. In the middle of a class musical like this, if we could bring out that old routine, we'd have them in the aisles. Only I haven't got Joe time. No. No, but you've got Billy Shea. You know that old baggy pants stuff? Know it. <laughs> Why, I taught it to Joe. Oh, great, great. Let's see it. Well, I, I'd i be pretty rusty without a rehearsal, but if you want to wait till tomorrow morning, I'll have it down pat. Okay, go to it. Ten minutes, everybody, then we'll run through the finale. Where are you going, Mom? I'll be back, dear. I just want to see Mr. Wilson. Now, we'll run ahead, June. See you at the hotel. Hotel? Yeah, that was quite a suggestion you made, Buster, but it means we've got a tough night ahead of us. I don't get it. Well, you're going to have to teach me Joe's routine. I thought you said you taught it to him. Well, uh, that's so Wilson wouldn't worry. You didn't have to say you taught it to him. All you had to say was you knew it. Now, listen, kid, you're getting a little too big for your britches. Now, let's go. We'll work on the rehearsal room at the hotel. Oh, June, uh, something on your mind? Well, it's about Billy, Mr. Wilson. He never taught Joe that old routine. No, I didn't think so. But he can learn it. If, if you really want that number, why not let Joe do it? Joe? I can reach him in five minutes. Uh, I've heard about Joe. I just couldn't take the chance. Oh, but he's fine now. I saw him only today. Now let's let well enough alone, hmm? Sure, Mr. Wilson. Whatever you say. It's no use, Billy. You just don't understand a dance routine like Pop. I did it the way you did it, didn't I? Now turn on that phonograph and we'll do it again. Okay, but it's no use. Nothing like Pop. Nothing like him. That's enough of that smart talk. Keep going. What a good it'll do. Now listen, kid. I've taken about enough, see? Where would you be without me, huh? Down on the Barbary Coast with your old man. Shut up! You leave him out of this. I've run through this number all I'm going to. Lay off me, will you? Now let's get this straight, Buster, once and for all. No little squirt like you is going to ruin my big chance. Now you're going to show me right? Uh, or do I have to slap it on you? Okay. Okay, I'll try it again. Joe! Joe, Merry Christmas! Hello, Curly. I I just wanted to leave this package. It's for Buster. I I guess they're all at the theater. Huh? Well, June, yeah, but Buster, no, he and Billy are upstairs in the rehearsal room. Joe, don't leave. Go up and see the boy. Just him and Billy, huh? Go on. Go on. Yeah, well, maybe I will. Just, just for a minute. Well, what are you stopping for? And don't tell me you're tired. I'm not tired. I'm not going to show you a big time's routine. If you kill me, I'm not going to show it to you. You'll show it to me in right now. Stop it. Stop it, will you? Pop. Pop. Joe. Hello, Joe. What's he been doing to you, small time? You hurt? No, Pop. Honest, I'm all right. Turn off the music, kid. Sure, Pop, sure. Oh, gosh, am I glad to see you. And lock that door over there. Sure. <laughs> now, now, wait a minute, Joe. You see, we were just rehearsing. Yeah, I know. Now, you and I are going to do a little rehearsing. Pop, no, we will kill you. Give it stay. Pop! And that's the story, Mr. Wilson. When we finally broke in the rehearsal room, they were both unconscious. Oh, gosh, Mr. Wilson, you should have seen Pop. Yeah? What about Billy Shea? I'm here, ain't I? Where's Billy? In the hospital. Yeah. And uh, you may think it's funny, but I don't. Joe time right up to his old tricks. I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson, but when I found him beating up on small time, I guess I lost my head. Yeah, what head? You weren't satisfied wrecking your own career. You had to throw, find a way to throw June and the kid here out of work, too. Oh, what would you do, Mr. Wilson? I know what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to open a show in just one week. Thanks to Joe here, one of my most important performers is indefinitely indisposed. It was all my fault. Oh, sure. Your father was protecting you, but who's going to protect me? See, I, I just don't know what to say. Yeah, I know you don't. If you did, you'd at least have the courtesy to help me out. Huh? Sure. You'd say, Al, I'll be happy to take my old place in the act so you won't be without an extra closing spot in the show. That's what you'd say. 
Next to closing? Mr. Wilson, you you really mean that? Hey, you heard me. I think you can be in shape to go on. Be in shape? Oh, I'll be there if they have to carry me on in a stretcher. Big time. We'll murder him. Oh, Joe. Joe. the joy they've given our listeners tonight, our very special thanks go to Jack Carson, Dorothy Lamour, and Robert Alden. Thank you, Bill. It was really swell working with Dottie and Bob. You know, there was just one thing lacking tonight. I wish this audience could see uh, Dorothy's lovely complexion. Well, I thank Lux Soap for that, Bill. It's always been my favorite, and more than ever now with the new bath size. Well, I just don't understand it. What don't you understand, Jack? Bob Ball and I have just come back from a personal appearance tour of 36 states. We saw thousands and thousands of people. Wonderful people, Jack. Yes, but not once did they mention my Lux complexion. <laughs> <laughs> and me using the big bath size, too. <laughs> but by the way, Jack, why only 36 states? What happened to the other 12? We went to Texas instead. <laughs> <laughs> now, Bill, what's the play next Monday? It's the mystery thriller to the ends of the earth. And we'll have the original stars of the screen cast, Dick Powell and Signa Hassel. This is a drama of United States Treasury agents on the trail of international criminals. A hit on the screen and an exciting story for this stage next Monday night. We'll love that one, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good, Good night, night and come again. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Dick Powell and Signe Hasso in To the Ends of the Earth. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Jack Carson appeared by arrangement with Warner Brothers, producers of Colorado Territory. Dorothy L'Amour appeared through the courtesy of Seal Test and is currently starring in the Pine Thomas production for Paramount, Manhandled. Heard in tonight's cast were Alan Reed as Curly and Bill Johnstone, Herbert Butterfield, Willard Waterman, Bob Griffin, Norman Field, Joe Forte, Anthony Boris, Cliff Clark, Eddie Marr, Truda Marson, and Howard McNear. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Louis Silvers. Our Lux Radio Theater production of April Showers has come to you with the good wishes of the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, Hollywood's own beauty soap. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear To the Ends of the Earth, starring Dick Powell and Signa Hasso. <laughs> <laughs>